everyone, this is Carmen from the Huntley Library, and today on 12 Days of Crafting, we're going to be painting with crayons. So I'm going to get some supplies together and then show you how to do that. For our project today, we are going to need a glue gun. This is a pretty cheap one that's a, a low temperature glue gun, you can see on the little label there. So it doesn't get super hot, but it's going to be hot enough to melt wax. Um, the good thing about this is that if you accidentally touch yourself with it, it doesn't hurt as much as one of the higher temperature ones. So I recommend a low temperature glue gun. And you're going to need a variety of crayons depending on what you want to paint. Um, you're going to need something to paint on. So I have these little, these are like little wooden coaster type things. They'll make a good small canvas. You could also use, um, we had some of these canvas boards left over from some other art projects. And uh, I like these because they're not as big and bulky as stretched canvas, so that's a possibility. If you don't have anything like that, you can always use like a thicker piece of cardboard to play around with. Um, you're also going to want to have something to protect your working surface. Um, I recommend paper because Wax is really hard to get out of things, and colored wax might stain cloth or clothing, so just be careful of that. Um, some of the crayons that we are going to use, or that you might use, are maybe too big to fit in your glue gun, like slightly. I think the Crayola ones did not fit super well. So um, you can trim those down, you can shave off some of the wax along the sides until they do fit nicely. And um, the off-brand ones, the non-Crayola ones, seem to be a little bit thinner, so those go, those go right in. If you've used your glue gun with glue in the past, um, you will want to express all of the glue out of there before you use the, before you paint with the crayons, or you can use the glue to make some kind of textured background on your artwork. So just be aware of that. Um, the wax does not ruin your glue gun. You may have to do some cleaning of it if you plan to use it for as a glue gun again and you don't want the wax in there. Um, once the wax dries, it's pretty easy to peel off. And uh, if you just push it through and, and add a glue stick, that should clean out the inside of the, the glue gun. Okay, so I'm going to get this heated up and get my crayons ready, and then I'm going to show you how to how to paint with this glue gun. So I have an old vegetable peeler that I'm going to use to uh, shave some of my crayons down. And you can throw the peelings away if you want to, or you can add them later and melt them with the tip of the glue gun. So if you want to save them and see if they can become a part of your artwork later on, you can do that. This part's kind of messy. Actually, this whole thing is probably one of those crafts that they would ban me from doing in the library because, wow, did that, does that make a mess? <laughs> um, I watched a video about someone else's experience doing this and she recommended only doing splatter painting with the glue gun just because the wax comes out so fast and if you have it held above anything, it just kind of makes splatters all over the place. And you can make some cool stuff with that, but also you can paint, um, if you hold it very close to the surface that you're working on, you can paint with it pretty well. So this is just a demo of how to shave down your crayons right now, so you can do that with some of yours just to have them ready to go, um, because it's no fun to have to stop in the middle, looks like this one fits now, and uh, shave your crayons, especially since the wax is very fluid and will get everywhere. So I'm ready to go. I just need to clean up a little bit around here. These are all of my pretty crayon shavings. I've kind of got a little palette going on there. And then I have my <laughs> shaved crayons over here. So hopefully those will all fit in my glue gun when I'm ready to use them. So let me clean up a little bit so that I'm not melting wax directly onto my table. And then I'll show you what we need to do next. We are ready to start painting. I'm going to be working on one of these little coasters to show you some of the splatter painting idea. Um, and I have some napkins over on the side here in case I need to change colors and I want to have a place for the waste crayon to go, I guess, or the rest of the wax. You can break your crayons up into smaller pieces if you don't 
need to use as much. And you can also um, eject them if there's still enough uh, crayon sticking out over this little area right here in your glue gun. You should be able to reach in and, and pull it out. But that's not always the case, so sometimes you just have to keep using that color or um, use it somewhere else. So I think I will start with a red. And if your crayon's not getting all the way down to where the heat element is down there, you can use another crayon to push it further. This is where you can get lots of splatters, so if you don't want it to show up on your um, canvas, then do it off to the side. And once it heats up, it's going to take a moment for it to do that, and starts melting, then it's going to come out really quickly. See? Drip, drip, drip. So you can see how it just kind of drips right out and how messy this might be. And then you can use the trigger like you would with a glue gun to just express more. Yeah, squirt. <laughs> so be sure to keep it pointed in the direction of your canvas and not at anybody sitting across the table from you because it could go everywhere. I just added some more red there. And this is this is splatter painting, y'all, so you can kind of do it however you want to, as long as you're not making a big mess outside of your work area. I'm going to switch colors and remove the rest of this red one. And maybe we'll put in, this is kind of a pinky lavender. Still got some red down in the bottom here, so that's going to have to come out. Oh yeah, squirt. <laughs> Ooh, see, off to the side. Be careful which direction you're, you're pointing. And the cool thing about painting with wax is that you can get all kinds of different layers. You can mix colors. You can get up close and uh, kind of re-melt things if you don't like how they're looking. So you can drag the end of the, the glue gun where it's hot into the wax that's already kind of drying in here and re-melt it and drag it around. Looks like that's more of a pink that I've got in there. It's hard to tell. So practice this first, just so you can see how the wax moves and how it comes out of your glue gun. So you can be prepared for that before you have to uh, do something more delicate or more decisive where it's going to matter more where your wax ends up falling. I'm going to add some other colors and then I'll show you what the final product looks like. So I'm just going to show you the progress that I've made here. Um, after splattering, I've just been using the tip of the glue gun where it's still very hot to remelt some of that wax and just spread it around. And you can get some really interesting textures doing that. And also blend some of the colors too. So I got my pink and my orange kind of blending here to make a little bit of a melon color. This could be like a volcano exploding. I haven't really <laughs> decided what it is yet, but maybe an idea will present itself to me as I'm doing this. Melting and redistributing some of the wax on here. 
So experiment with that technique too and see what you can create. I'm going to keep going and then we'll check back in with you. All right, so what did I do? I added a little bit of purple over in one of the corners after I did the red and the orange and the pink, and then I just blended it with the tip of the, the glue gun to make sure everything was kind of melting and flowing into the other colors. So that's what that turned out like. And it's got this cool texture too from where I dragged the, the tip of the glue gun through that. It's still a little wet right over here. You can also see my huge splatter that went off of my little area that I was trying to keep clean. If this happens to you, it's probably easier to um, use a fingernail or something to peel this off after it dries. It should come off pretty easily. So let's try something else. I'm going to get another canvas out here another little piece of wood. Um, this time I think I'm going to try using the curls and see how that goes. So I'm just going to arrange these on the canvas here and kind of the same way that they were on the plate. And then I'm going to try melting them with the tip of the glue gun and see what that will create if anything. Could be interesting. I'm all for experimentation. Put some red and orange up in this corner. And I have kind of a blacks and grays over here. Red, orange, brown. Some more green and yellow. Some more blue and purple. And I have some more white over here. So that's pretty well covered right now. And we'll take up my trusty glue gun and see if I can melt some of this. And I'm just kind of tapping it around in the shavings. And when they hit the tip, which is quite hot, they're sticking to it and melting, oozing. <laughs> And you can just keep it in there for a little while if you want it to melt around the tip. And you can drag the wet wax around with the tip too. These little feet right here sometimes get in the way of this. This is not really how the glue gun was intended to be used. So if you have one that has like one of those little um, metal rests that you can flip up, that might be a better kind of glue gun to use. You don't be dragging your feet through it all the time. So I'm going to keep melting, and if you want to try this out too, you can keep melting as well, and then I'll check back in with you in a little bit, and we'll see what we got. I stopped for just a minute to give you a little progress update, so that's what that's looking like now. Nice and rainbowy. There's still quite a bit of stuff I have to melt over there. I'm about three quarters of the way through, and then I'll do some tweaking and blend some more of these uh, bits that didn't melt the first time through. Here's everything melted and blended. It's kind of dark overall, but you can still see different colors. Again, we have that interesting texture from dragging the tip of the glue gun through that. Okay. So, we have one little canvas left. And you're probably wondering, can I do anything that's more detailed? And the answer is yes, but you have to be <laughs> kind of careful. Um, the splatter method is easy because you can quickly make corrections and it doesn't have to be as um, well defined. But if you're trying to do something specific you might experience some frustration if things splatter all over unintendedly like they did for me. 
Um, so it might help to have like a idea of what you want to do in mind, or a reference photo or something, or you could trace something out on your canvas to paint over. Um, I have a little winter scene that I found that looks like that. So I'm going to try and make a blue background and then make these uh, maybe darker trees and then put the white one in the middle like that. Um, it's a very small canvas, so hopefully it won't be too difficult. Um, I have a lot of, I think, red or purple in here still. Um, be careful when you're emptying your glue gun. If you are turning it over like this and there's a lot of melted wax and crayon in that tip, it can come right out the back and get your fingers. So I warn you to be careful. Um, so the background in the reference photo that I have is kind of a turquoise blue. So I'm going to start with this blue here and spell my purple on the side here. Okay, we're getting some blue. So the key to this part to get like a nice background and the in definite areas where you want it is to stay very close to your canvas with the tip. So I'm just basically drawing right on it, painting right on it with the crayon. And the crayon's melting pretty quickly, so I'm going to add a, another one here. So far most of these crayons are fitting pretty well since I shaved them down a bit. The nice thing about working with the wax like this is that um, like acrylic paints or oil paints, you can blend these, you can paint over in other colors, and uh, it's pretty forgiving in that sense. It's not like watercolor or marker where you're kind of stuck with that color once you've laid it down somewhere. And unless you have something darker to go over it, that's what you got. So there is actually a type of painting where you paint with beeswax that has pigment, color pigment added to it, and it's called encaustic painting. And I took a one-time class doing that. It was a lot of fun. Um, also kind of messy like this. <laughs> Not as messy, you have a little bit more, we had more, more control over what we were doing. But it was still like, you could not, uh, if you used a paintbrush, that was probably the end of the brush because once it's got wax in it, it's, that's just how it's gonna be forever and ever. <laughs> you can try and melt it off, but I don't think that was always good for the brush. So here we have my blue background. And I'm gonna add a few other blues to it um, to get more of a turquoise effect. Kind of like where this is going, but um, I'm gonna do that and then come back and do the trees. Okay, here's my bluish background. It's gonna be a little bit darker than the reference photo. That's okay. I'm going to use this green for some of the green trees in the background and hopefully squeeze out. So they're just going to be kind of in this area. And uh, to widen them out, I'm just going to melt a little bit at the, the base here. So 
This one's kind of a mess. Hmm. You can just melt away the parts that aren't so great. Okay. Now I have to switch colors. So I've still got quite a bit of green in here. So I'm going to try and use a white since that's my next color to push that through. Splat, splat, splat. Still got lots of green. It's starting to change. Will it ever be not green? <laughs> that is the question. I do have some light coming through. That's still pretty green. I may have to be satisfied with just a real light green, at least for now. Okay, so that tree is larger and it's going to ring down just in front of these. Whoops. One thing I learned after making a larger piece, which I'll show you in a little while, is that it becomes extremely tiring on your hands to have to keep pressing this trigger here. So you may suffer some hand fatigue after painting like this. I think we can all agree that this doesn't look anything like <laughs> the reference drawing. It's, it's mm, an idea of the reference drawing. It's a take on it. It's definitely <laughs> not exactly. Okay. So I can melt this more if I want to. Never really got completely totally white, I don't think. There's still a little bit of green. Plus, um, when I'm melting it like this, it's blending with the colors in the background too, so it's becoming slightly blue. If you want to avoid that kind of mixing, you can start, or you can just make this first and then paint around it. I thought it would be more difficult to paint around it though since it's got a lot of detail. You can also add more white on top of it if you prefer. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to take the rest of the white out and try not to burn my fingers as it pours out the back. <laughs> and then um, I've got kind of a light green here that I'm going to try and use to highlight some of those green trees. I have to feed it in and let it start melting. There we go. So we'll give them a little bit of detail too. This is where it would be nice to have maybe different sized tips on your rug arm because 
you just get the one. So that actually looks pretty cool with the highlights there. And then you're able to blend it in so that it doesn't get too light and take the focus away from that other tree. Just stop squeezing the trigger when you want it to blend and then you shouldn't get too much of that color coming out. And there's some streaks in my photo coming down, like there's some reflection on the snow here from the, the light in the trees. And then I'm gonna paint um, just a little bit of maybe light blue, oops, I have to get this out of here, over the, the tree, the white tree. First we'll empty out the green if we can. There it is, shooting everywhere. I have a lot of cleanup to do after this. Okay, so I've got some, whoops. I didn't want that there. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that to this tree. And then maybe, oops, kind of made a divot in the tree. I melted a crevasse in my tree. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. I'm going to switch back to the white. If I can. Ooh, there's another mess. I don't know why everything is so messy. I should have used a tablecloth or a, like a newspaper tablecloth or something. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Okay, do I have some light again? I do. This white crayon I did not shave as much as I probably should have. I'm getting better at switching over to that um, scrap napkin though. Okay, stop pulling on the trigger so I can melt some of this down. You could make this look very tree textured if you wanted to. Okay. And now we just kind of need, I don't know how this is gonna work, um, some little splatters for the snow. And I don't, I don't know if that's gonna be doable with this. It might just come out very blotty. So I'm squeezing a little bit and then shaking. It may or may not work. I'm getting them in very specific spots. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that. Since some of them are kind of big, I might um, go over it and try and blend it in with the background there. Maybe. Or maybe I'm just going to mess it up. <laughs> I like some of the littler spots. It's just some of these big ones are just out of control. Um, I'm gonna try and take care of this one too. So I think I'm gonna leave the, the rest. Okay, so there we have our 
more detailed sort of painting. Not really like the original at all, but it's okay for a value. Okay, and there's all of the ones that we did. So I had just one more that I wanted to show you. This is one that I did on a larger canvas. This is my rabbit tiny bun. And this one turned out pretty well. Um, for this I did the rabbit first and then I kind of filled in these swirls in the background afterwards. So that's another way that you can do it. But for my first attempt, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Thanks for joining me today for 12 Days of Crafting, and I hope you had fun painting with crayons. I hope it didn't take you two hours to clean up your mess. Um, hopefully you were very neat. For more fun craft ideas, please check out our website, www.huntleylibrary.org. Thanks, and see you next time.